Welcome to Foundation of Friday. Welcome to Foundation of Friday. Welcome to Foundation of Friday. Peace, everyone. You are now listening to Foundational Friday on Enlightenment and Transformation. I am Chief Yuya, also known as H. Yuya San Anu, and uh, welcome again. But uh, I also want to let everyone know that tonight's subject will be dealing with uh, self hypnosis, the idea of self self hypnosis. Okay, and um, I kind of wanted to get into this subject because it's actually one of the the tools that we utilize in the Anu spiritual training. Uh, Not so much of a blatant and overt tool, but uh, through certain rituals and activities that are given to uh, the student or we'll say the participant, because every participant is not a student. But through every uh, activity that is given and every lecture. Uh, there's an element of self-hypnosis that uh, is utilized, and even if it's not named as such. And I know a lot of times when we think about the idea of, of hypnosis or, or being hypnotized, it seems like something uh, something evil and sinister is getting ready to happen. But no, that's not the case. You know, uh, in fact, uh, hypnosis is is extremely effective. And it can be harmless. The, the hypnosis itself is not the issue. We're going to get into what that means. We're going to get into where, what, where the issue lies when we start getting into uh, the manipulation of the subconscious mind. Because that's what we're dealing with when we're dealing with hypnosis. We're dealing with getting beyond the active consciousness, which is the, you know, that's the weak part. That's the weakest part. That's the part that, you know, uh, makes you feel like you keep letting yourself down. That's the part that makes you feel guilty because you told yourself you weren't going to do something or you told yourself you were going to do something. And despite your words, your your actions did not align with your actual words. So then you feel a measure of guilt, but you didn't realize because the vibration of the um, of the conscious or the active consciousness just muting all my stuff here. But uh, the vibration of the active consciousness is is not very strong at all. So we have to go to where the power is, where Olokun is, and that's in the subconscious mind, beneath the consciousness. Before we do that, we get into that. I wanted to share something really quick. Um, as many of you know, especially those of you who are historical <laughs> listeners of this segment, uh, I have been saying for a while that uh, we're going to start moving some of our work off of this platform and moving on to another So. Uh, some of you right now are probably listening to this from YouTube and some of you, of course, are listening right now as it's playing live on Blog Talk. So I wanted to you all to know that uh, these shows will be going straight to YouTube and starting November 1st, November 1st, Masterminds Mondays, which is Mondays at 9 p.m., Anu Asafo, which is Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern. I'm, I'm quoting Eastern time here, everyone. Uh, so 9 p.m. Eastern. Anu Asafo is Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern. Thunderground Thursdays, which is 9 p.m. Eastern on Thursdays. And Foundational Fridays, which is 9 p.m. Eastern on Fridays, will now be going directly to youtube okay so what that means until we jump off of that but don't worry we keep copies of all our work so uh what that means is that uh the only segment that will be going straight to blog talk will be chief speaks on sundays at 11 a.m eastern so if you wanted to and this is starting november 1st 2015 
November 1st, 2015, we'll be, we will be going direct to YouTube. Okay. So I say that to say, um, well, to suggest that all of you now subscribe to the enlightenment and transformation channel that we have on YouTube. Okay. Uh, the channel will be in the description of this segment, but it's also, uh, whenever we post a copy on our Facebook page, you know, uh, facebook.com forward slash Sadulu house. That's S A D U L U H O U S E. We always post copies of our shows there and stuff and copies of our videos. And there you would get, um, I guess a little notification of, of where that actual Facebook page is. Also, if you go to enlightenment and transformation.com, that's the word enlightenment and transformation.com. Uh, there's some links in the upper right hand corner. The, you'll see a link to our YouTube page. You'll see a YouTube logo. If you click that, it'll take you there. And I suggest uh, you all subscribe. Subscribe. So you will know when the shows are being dropped. Or I should say are being released. Okay. So our segment starting in November will be going directly to YouTube. YouTube. We're going to bypass uh, Blog Talk for a little while. See how it works out. And uh, but we will be showing we will be staring still airing Chief Speaks uh, live. You can still call in, you know, the number nine four seven three three four seven. I'm sorry, nine four five seven six eight zero. Um, and that will still be active for for a while longer as well uh, on Sundays where you can call and speak to me live and speak to uh, my co-host, Sister Kim and Sister Felicia live as well. All right, but I just want to give you all the heads up and I'll make an announcement again just so that everyone is clear and not wondering what the heck happened. There's no more Thunderground Thursdays, no more Foundational Fridays, no more I Know Software, no more Mastermind Monday. No, we're going uh, to a different format uh, to avoid some of the YouTube. I'm sorry, the, the blog talk stuff that we've had. I mean, at the end of the day, they're all leeches and parasites to some degree, right? Um but uh, if I'm going to pay <laughs> to be leached and parasite, then I better at least get my money's worth. And uh, Blog Talk right now isn't even doing that properly. So, um, yeah, so we're, we're going to be moving just starting November 1st. I'm giving you guys a heads up now. Uh, you know, I know it's two months away, but that way no one is thrown off or anything like that. OK. All right. So we're going to take a quick break. And after that, we're going to get into the subject of the night, which of course is self-hypnosis. We'll be right back. Greetings all. This is Chief Yuya. And if you're interested in learning how herbs can be used for healing and magic, then join us on September 13th at 7 p.m. Eastern for a power-packed A New Nation webinar entitled The Spiritual Gifts of Herbs. The Spiritual Gifts of Herbs is a live webinar and will be hosted by host of Anu Asafo, co-host of Chief Speaks, member of the Doodle House Spiritual Center, and our resident alchemist, Kim. Some of the topics covered will be the use of herbs for specific uses and spiritual practices, discerning which herbs are best for men and women, and why certain herbs are associated with male or female deities, as well as creating a working relationship with your ally, Herbs of Nature. Those who RSVP early and attend the event will receive 25% off of all Our New Nation products and services. To RSVP, simply go to anunation.org forward slash events. That's A-N-U-N-A-T-I-O-N dot O-R-G forward slash E-B-E-N-T-S and register before September 13th. Learn how to choose herbs to create effective rituals by attending the Spiritual Gifts of Herbs webinar. I'll see you there. All right, so we're back with more Foundational Friday on enlightenment and transformation. And we're speaking about the um, idea ideal of uh, self-hypnosis and actually i was going to do this this segment this evening as a video i was going to take you kind of through some of the steps of self-hypnosis or do like the actual activity on air but i decided not to yeah so i'm going to do something instead and really well i'm going to focus on something because i i found uh you know trial and ever error over the years uh, you know i started 
I got on the radio really first time, which was really an FM radio show I used to have um, years ago, back in like 2003, you know, and, um, you know, you, you kind of sometimes it takes you a while to find your groove, it takes you a while to fine tune and figure out what works and figure out what doesn't work. You know, you kind of get your formula down packed. So sometimes I, I'll exp I'll still experiment, even though I feel like I have a pretty strong formula. Sometimes I'll still experiment and try little things and see how people respond and things like that and of course you know when you're doing internet radios it's, it's, it's even better because you get an immediate feedback it's not like when we did fm we could only really tell we could see how many people were called into the lines of listening and stuff like that but it's not really the same thing but um so yeah so sometimes you'll find what i do is that i'll pick a subject and i won't try to cover the the totality of that subject or the idea but i'll just pick one component uh and that's because sometimes you know when, when you have a lot of information that you're excited about uh or you feel is very valuable sometimes you could kind of blow your top <laughs> you know you just share a little bit too much and you have to learn how to regulate very important men very important you know, you have to know how to regulate how much information that you flow out of you because not only will you turn people off, but you also confuse people. And uh, on top of that, like I said before, and using the analogy of the sun, uh, you will burn up, you will scorch the earth with too much sunlight. So you have to know when to pull back or maybe even to use more uh, intellectualism in between those those are the clouds to kind of give people shade a little bit in between what what it is that you're saying so that's what sometimes sometimes i'll just pick one little point now um in regards to that because you know everything i say is always tied into the subject for the night so even with that like when we're talking about the uh induction of hypnosis because that's what i really want to i want to focus on the induction uh which is you know when we're inducing someone to a hypnotic state and you know, of course, tool used by many uh, therapists and psychologists, and, and it's actually a, a tool that is uh, approved and recommended by the uh, American Medical Association because they have reported that over 95 percent of the um, of the country's populace can actually be put under hypno hypnotic suggestion. So basically, every, anyone, everyone can be hypnotized with the same, which is important for you all to know. It's very important for you all to know, okay? Especially those of you who are really into media and television. And, um, I mean, well, now YouTube has beat out television. Crazy, right? By like a, um, oh man, a 30, 30 something percent margin, like 36 percent, you know, margin that YouTube is now beat out television. You know, changing signs of the times. I spoke about that last night, you know, but also that's, you know, what it also is, you know, which part they, they may not be saying is because like of the housing collapse and the recession, everybody lost their homes. So a lot of people had to resort to downsizing. So people who had nice big apartments before big houses, like now living in rooms, they're renting rooms or they're living in people's basements or, you know, or back home with the parents. So they don't have space anymore for these huge 60 inch inch flat screen TVs, you know, so they use their tablets and they use their phones for all of their entertainment. That's why the devices keep getting smaller and smaller. You don't even see like huge component stereo sets anymore. No one has any more space anymore because everybody lost their homes, you know, so that's that's just a sign of the recession. When you see things getting smaller like that, people don't have space to put things but what i was speaking about earlier uh in terms of like even a way uh sometimes you can you can overload or you you can kind of flood someone with information right and that's actually a tool of hypnosis i was watching a a, a video earlier today that i was sharing with a family member and it was a um, it was an individual who was doing like a radio interview and um I'm looking at him. He's like speaking extremely fast, you know, and I always notice with this particular individual, he has a very light voice. He always sounds like he's whispering. He talks like this and I'm saying what we need to do. You know, he kind of has one of those type of voices, but he, but he talks really, really fast. You know, um, he's got small lips. I noticed. So, you know, people with small lips, they can, <laughs> they can do that like twister. You see the rapper twister. He's got small lips too. They can talk real fast like that. Those of us, 
who have uh, more fuller developed lips we we stumble <laughs> some certain words would give us a little bit of trouble because we got a lot of weight to move and our you know on our lips when we when we have things to say so um we can't really do all of that speed talking as much um but i was just kind of looking at him and i said you know um the way he's speaking the hand gestures um the tone the rhythm he's actually using hypnotic suggestion and uh the people may not realize it you know uh now this individual he kind of he, he works in the field of the mind you know so of course this is probably techniques that he's either utilized or he's he's at least studied you know and um the key that i want everyone to kind of keep in mind about about hypnosis because the induction is the most important part not not so much the hypnosis because that's we'll, we'll get into why that's not really that big a deal but um hypnosis itself like i said is not your issue i know a lot of times people feel like when they're talking to people who are in different traditions or people who are like really indoctrinated with religion or very uh staunch political you know or social beliefs that say oh man you hypnotized or you brainwashed and that's that could be true but hypnotism is a step remember that hypnotism or, or hypnosis opens you up to suggestion okay so when a person is in a hypnotic state like when they're in a state of trance what it does is it increases their suggestibility okay so the fact that that person is in a more receptive space mentally is not the issue that's not the problem you want to be in a receptive space at certain times the issue that we have to be mindful of are the per 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 persuasive suggestions that are being offered or implanted <laughs> really that's really what we're talking about right but those suggestions that are being implanted into that individual through a series of psychological ritual okay that's more what we're concerned about but the hypnosis itself is a lot of times what many of you are striving towards when you're meditating and you're confusing hypnotic induction. I'm talking about those of you who are doing like a lot of spiritual work and stuff. A lot of times I notice people will confuse hypnotic uh, induction with meditation. You see, because when you're meditating, what you're doing is you're, you're looking for something. You're you're quote unquote clearing the mind, which I told you also is impossible. You can't clear the mind. You know, it's like saying, uh, let me clear the heart of blood. So I could focus on, you know, the heart. It, it doesn't work that way. But that's what people tell you because they don't know what the heck they're talking about. You'd be surprised how many people out here who are teaching who don't have a clue. Just like you'd be surprised how many people out here do readings just because they got a nice clean pack of tarot cards. They did four or five readings and they were somewhat accurate, or at least they convinced themselves into thinking they're accurate. Then they hang up the shingle and say, I'm a psychic reader. Because I've always been very intuitive. It, it's, it takes so much more than that. You know, especially when you're giving people advice for their life, man, that could make them or break them or, or, or kill them or, or extend the, their life or increase the quality of their life. You know, so um, meditation sometimes falls into that same bag. Sadly, a lot of times you have people who are like, facilitators of meditative experiences and i've been around these these situations sometimes when i'm at workshops and stuff and i have to speak and i'm watching them saying man this is this isn't it <laughs> you know this isn't meditation what the heck is this you know but you don't one thing you don't you know i don't me i don't say anything for the most part uh i like to watch so yeah so uh meditation of course like i said and i think i did a show on meditation already but uh if i haven't i will don't worry about it but yeah, it's not it's not clearing your mind. OK, so in the same instance, hypnosis is not um, suggestion. Hypnosis is not influencing hypnosis by definition means to go to sleep. OK, that's that's all a, a hypnotic state is. It's a state where you're asleep. But now what's asleep? Right. That's the part we got to get to. Well, what you're putting to sleep is your analytical form of your mind or your masculine mind. OK, your masculine mind is asleep so that your feminine mind can be can be unfiltered to suggestion. Now, you guys have heard me say this before, and I know you probably heard me saying like, what the heck? You know, like, who's he talking to? Well, you've heard me say before that 
women are the world suckers. I'll say it again. Women are, you know, like when P.T. Barnum said a sucker is born every minute, he was talking about females. Females are the world's suckers. They fall for any and everything. This is why the churches are packed with females, not just because they look for male leadership and because they're sensitive to spirit and stuff like that. But females have a lot of time discerning between a phony and someone who's authentic. They have a lot of trouble with that. That's why you can sell them garbage deals on cars. You can uh, take them to the mechanic shop and work them over. A plumber can come to the house and work them over. They just get worked over left and right when they're not covered by a man because they are the world's suckers. But why are they the world's suckers? Because they are the receptive energy of the universe. You need receptivity and you need expandability. You need them both because that's how you grow. You can't grow without receiving something. Just like you can't grow food unless the earth receives the food. Try to go plant plant some uh you know some corn on uh on a rock because that rock that's that's or your yangi stone that's that shoe that's your man you can't you can't grow anything on a rock you need something that's going to take the information in and protect it see this is the danger a lot of times when we speak about what has happened to us as uh those of us who are listening who are melanin dominant because i know all of you are not but when we speak about the condition that we go through here in in North America. And I always have said unapologetically that the men are crazy and the women are insane. Okay. Because crazy is, I know I'm crazy. You talk to a guy on the street who's a, inebriated. He'll say, yeah, man, I got to get myself together. You talk to a woman on the street who's inebriated and she'll say, ain't nothing wrong with me. She'll flip out on you, be ready to punch you in your face. She does. She's, she's not even where an issue exists. Why? Because when an idea is implanted inside of it, it's like insurrection, trying to get that thing out. You know, you got to go deep, deep, deep down because she's an earth energy, a receptive energy that that allows those ideas to go deep into the crevices of who and what she is. And then what she does is she closes her earth up over those ideas to keep them protected from sunlight. And she regulates how much sunlight sunlight they get. That's why you got to be careful. A lot of you, you men, and I've mentioned this before. I'll mention it again. You know, I repeat myself a lot. But a lot of you, like, you want to get lessons with me and take classes with me and things like that. But you marry, and I'll say, okay, well, you're teaching these things to your wife. No, man, I want to get it myself or this or that. No, you're trying to be the deep one, and you want your wife to be the stupid one. You know, and that's abusive. I mean, I don't know if it's a form. We maybe we could call it intellectual abuse, but that's that's a form of, of abuse, you know, withholding information like that. Because what happens now when your children come out like idiots? Because you wanted to hoard information. Who is teaching those children? It ain't you, because you're busy on YouTube looking at documentaries and doing my training. While the, while the mother is there and sharing information and emotions and thoughts out of her breast when she's nursing or when she's putting them to sleep at night and when she's bathing them when they're hyperactive at night. And that's when they want to ask the most questions when they're in the water, a receptive environment. Mommy, mommy, can I? Mommy, mommy. She has to have something to say to them. So it is the quality of the seeds that you implant in her, which will then determine the quality of what is produced later. So what happens with the female is that she takes care of your seed. A good woman will take care of your seed, just like good earth will take care of what you implant in it. It's going to it's going to go deep down into the earth, away from predators, you know, with the with the groundhogs and the squirrels and the rabbits will try to dig it up. It's going to go deep down and it's going to root. And then it's going to utilize water, that flow of consciousness, and it's going to u- utilize air and it's going to utilize sun in order to produce something and grow something that you can now witness. You see, so when we're going through a state of hypnosis, what we're doing is we're getting that man out the way so we can have a direct conversation with the woman that lives inside of your head. And just like the, the, the woman of the Bible, you tell her anything, she's going to listen to it. Okay. All right. This is true. All right. Because a na- a woman's natural positioning is is receptivity. 
Now, even though you have women who want to argue and fuss and things like that nowadays, that's for a couple of reasons. One, because a lot of times they've lost confidence based on a lot of bad decisions that they've made or a lot, a lot of bad decisions that the person who is significant to them has made or also because they are under suggestion by the society that tells them that they know everything. No one can tell them anything. They got all the answers. So when you start talking to them, they just want to riff and no, no, because how are you going to tell me, to, you know, and stuff like that. OK, so at that moment, you know that she was already going through a multi step process. She had to be put into a space, into a state where she was completely suggestible, which is already kind of her tendency anyway. And then the suggestion had to be implanted. Now, you'll find that because think about the size of a seed. One little tiny seed can grow into something that can feed an entire family one seed that's where it gets tricky you know go out into your yard and you know dig it all up right till till all the soil highly suggestible now right it's ready to receive something and and like spray that spray it down so it's moist close your eyes and throw an eggplant seed or squash seed somewhere in your yard and walk away come back in a couple of days now you may be able to determine where that seed landed maybe because you might see a growth somewhere but if you don't you're not going to know until something is produced by then it's taking root and one thing about squash and zucchini is for any of you who have gardens like myself you know that stuff spreads that's why I don't plant too much because I'm not a big squash and zucchini person. That's like grown up vegetables. And I never I never really got my grown up taste buds. I thought they were gonna come in at some point. But I never got those grown up taste buds that where I would eat zucchini and squash and say, Oh, this is tasty. When I eat it, it still feels like what did I do? You're like, why why I gotta eat this? What did I do wrong? So, um But I still grow it because, you know, I you know, I do the adult thing, you know, and it's good for you and stuff like that. Uh, well, when I used to grow it, when I used to have my garden. So anyway, so we get into that, right? So that seed gets planted. That's the suggestion. But first, before the suggestion could have been planted, the ground had to be tilled and prepared to receive what it, what it was that was put inside of it. It had to become suggestible. OK, so that is that is the point of hypnotic induction we haven't even gotten yet to hypnotic suggestion but in order for hypnotic induction to happen the first layer which was that conscious mind the hardened layer of the soil had to be broken and turned over and you find that it's broken and turned over and made soft so isn't it interesting that in order to get to the woman or the feminine aspect of the soil the soft aspect you have to make you have to break the male aspect and make it soft. So essentially, you have to feminize the male to get to the woman and to plant a suggestion or an eggplant seed. Right. So when we speak about self hypnosis, like I said earlier, that hypnosis is the process of of sleeping of putting something in such a such a relaxed state that now it can take on a uh, um either a post hypnotic suggestion or uh an induced persuasive suggestion and of course the degrees and the deepness of that hypnosis is is really it's highly suggestible and i'll tell you why because what we're doing at this point is that we're going directly to the subconscious and the conscious mind cannot really be measured. So even when you speak to psychologists or you speak to doctors, it's it's difficult for them to say, okay, well, where does the subconscious begin? Where does the active conscious begin? So forth and so on. Because in truth, they're really theories. And, you know, we have to present theories of duality because of the way our brain thinks. So we have to think that something is higher and something is lower. You know, just it's just because the, the uh, limitations of... Uh, of our thoughts or the limitations of, of our brains. So 
let's get into the idea of self hypnosis for a second. And I'm not, I guess I'm not going to get into too many techniques right now. There's a lot of different techniques. You know, the ones with the watch staring at concentric circles. You're getting sleepy. Well, the reason they say you're getting sleepy, who are they? They're putting to sleep the conscious mind so that they can get to the subconscious mind or they're putting to sleep. Some of you call it the uh, left brain, which is your analytical aspect, your analytical side, the side that is going to have disbelief in order to suspend disbelief. Um, they'll put them into a, hu- a hypnotic state so they can get right to the right side, which is your more abstract, creative feminine side. Okay. Now, Here's what you want to look at. You want to look at the situations in your life where you are being straight up duped. <laughs> You're being duped. You're being prepared for people or prepared for situations and events that you would have that you have no critical reasoning towards when they come to you. OK, so like when somebody comes to you and says um, you get a reading. And they say, you know, you got to do this at bow because, you know, the Orisha are upset with you. Your Egun have issues with you and, you know, you're going to die. Blah, 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 blah. I've, and I've seen all this crap before. And sometimes it's true. Most times it's not. But sometimes, yeah. Um, what state that you have to be in in order to accept such a suggestion to be afraid and to go into your pocket and pull out five, six hundred dollars, fifteen hundred dollars, two thousand dollars to give someone money to do a ritual for you. Or like you're in church and someone makes you feel a certain way that you just go into your pocket, pull out everything you have and putting in put it into the offering tray. What state did you have to be in first in order to allow the suggestion of what people are saying and to con- and to totally suspend disbelief and to take in what they're saying. Okay. So when we're talking about self self hypnosis, the difference between self, one of the differences between self hypnosis and meditation is that when we're dealing with self hypnosis, we are including our own affirmations so that way we can instill confidence or a certain suggestion into our own mind. So we may go for a jog or maybe during sex, you know, or maybe during a shower or or whatever space that we can get into where we're completely open, where we're completely raw. For some of us, it's fasting. When we fast, we get like that. I've heard other people say that they're like that after they do an enema. You know, if that's your thing. Um, and they're just completely open to everything. And then that would be the moment that you would start to implant the suggestions. Okay. But the key is if you have not first induced that state of total receptivity, where you have put the conscious mind or the man or the linear or the logical thought to sleep, then you won't be able to receive the suggestions that need to be implanted into the receptive aspect of your mind and understand that the quality of that implantation needs to be important because once it's put in there, it's going to close up over it. Just like the soil closes up over a seed and it's going to protect it. This is why you, you go to a woman and talk to her about her religion, She's ready to fight you. Tell her her children are no good. And you know, they're no good <laughs> and on, you know, shooting people up, you robbing people. You tell me, I think your sons might be criminals. They'll go crazy because somebody has implanted another idea in their head and they're going to protect it to the very end. To really understand this, I would urge all of you who have not read it to go read the Willie Lynch letter. And then you understand how this process works. Read that Willie Lynch letter. And the value of the Willie Lynch letter is not in its authenticity. The value in the Willie Lynch letter is in its truth. That's where the value is. Because, you know, people have tried to come forth and say they didn't talk like that in that season. And in that time period, this is a fake letter. It was written by the CIA. Is it true, though? Just like somebody called into the show one time and asked me, can I prove the existence of the soul? No, I can't prove the existence of the soul. No, I don't know everything. Come on. Nobody knows everything. I can't prove that. But I don't really need to prove it. Because the thoughts and the ideas that I utilize as it pertains to the soul, just using that particular word, are powerful.
So it's the truth of the power of what comes with it. Okay. But it's also the truth of me saying I can't prove that it exists. But whatever that concept or that vibration or that energy is that exists there, there's something there. Now, we happen to call it soul, but people people call it different things. Some people call it Ori. Some people call it Ojiji. Some people call it Ka or Ka'at or Ket. They have all different names for it. You see? So, you know, um, life force, Moyo. Me going on, but so the thing is, it's the concept associated with it where the power comes from, you see, and that's what you want to look at, and that's really what I wanted to impress upon you in this segment. I want you to start looking at in terms of self self hypnosis what events or activities are you currently doing that are making you completely receptive or maybe breaking up your logical mind or causing you to suspend belief. And again, it made me think about it because when I was listening to the interview of the person this morning, I said, this person is straight line. Everything they're saying in this interview, like this person is a complete phony. Everything about them is fake. It's phony. But this particular individual receives a lot of praise. And I said, this is a this is a prime example of hypnotic suggestion. Belief has been suspended because even sometimes you find like this individual other people they may even be found out things may happen where they they're found out to not be a person of their word and people will still say oh i'm still with them that's hypnotism somebody planted something inside of you just like you may be working within a spiritual tradition and it's just not working for you and somebody says, well, maybe you need to change gears and you just refuse to do it. And of course, we'll say we refuse to do it out of fear, but also because somebody planted a seed inside of you or you might have planted it inside of yourself because you needed something to hold on to so bad. And maybe you needed a Messiah. Maybe you needed a solution. Maybe you were tired of searching and you wanted an end all be all answer. You hear people a lot of times when they call in the chief speaks doing that to me. But but I'm saying, what about? no, you're not getting an end all be all answer from me. You got to grow up. Stop acting like a child. You know, the world is bigger than your final answer that some false prophet or fake teacher is going to give you because there's no such thing. There's no final say on anything, no matter what anybody tells you, there's no final say on anything. I'll give you a small example. Somebody was talking to me the other day about um, like how we're in a digital age now and how he was like, well, I don't really think this is a grab for Africa anymore, because if you think about it, we're really in a technological age and that technology is coming out of China. So I said to him, where do you think the silica and the other minerals, like even the diamonds that we're using for the layer for the for the lasers to, in order to create certain circuit boards, where do you think those minerals are coming from? Even the gold inlay that we use on circuit on certain circuit boards to conduct electricity across the board. Where do you think that's coming from? You know, so you're, st you're still going to a place. You still need minerals, earth minerals in order to fuel this. You know, so so your your digital environment, just like when we have like quartz watch, a quartz watch. Well, what's in a quartz? It's a crystal. So this this watch that never loses time and stuff like that, it's a mineral inside. It's a rock. It's a crystal. You see? Can't get away from it. Yeah, anyway. So that's all I wanted to talk about on hypnosis. And uh, if you have an idea, comment, whatever, you can leave it um, on this video. You're going to see a YouTube video coming forth soon. And again, I remind you all that on November 1st, by November 1st, Mastermind Mondays, a new Asafo, Thunderground Thursday, Foundational Friday will be going straight to YouTube. So be sure to go to YouTube, search for Enlightenment and Transformation, and click the subscribe button for that channel. All right, until such time.